Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about Roll Center, what it is and why it's important. So the Roll Center is the instantaneous axis about which the sprung mass is rotating. Uh, and I'll get into why this is important, but first let's kind of talk about how you can locate it. And uh, using a diagram of the vehicle, it's actually a fairly simple concept to understand. Um, so basically what we have here is the body of the vehicle here we have the tire and then you've got this suspension linkage so you've got these joints of the suspension on both the chassis and then for connecting with the wheel now if you draw lines from these points uh, along from joint to joint of these suspension arms um, so what you're going to have is an intersection of these two points and that's important because that's the instantaneous center and what that is is the point about which that suspension those suspension arms are rotating at that very instant. So it's only for one instant uh, that this is important and that's how you define it. And so then you take the line from the bottom of the center of the wheel and you intersect that with the instantaneous center from those suspension arms. And then you take where the center of the vehicle, assuming that it's symmetrical, uh, that line where it intersects with the line connecting from the center of the tire to the instantaneous center, and that's gonna be where your roll center is. And the reason it's there is because that's where those two lines are going to intersect. So if you imagine this is symmetrical, you're going to have the other tire over here, and then those two are going to cross right there. So you're going to find the intersection of uh, the two lines which go from the center of the tires to the instantaneous centers of each suspension side. Now, if you were to look at a McPherson strut uh, versus a double wishbone, it's very similar in concept. So you just take where that joint is uh, up at the top, and then you go perpendicular to it. Uh, and so then you'd have a line coming down to here. You'd have yours going across here. So there's going to be your instantaneous center. And then you draw a dotted line from the center of the wheel to that line. And then you can see your roll center will be located underneath. So in a similar location to what we have here based on the geometry which I've drawn it. So the important things to know are where's the center of gravity, uh, where's the roll center, and then the distance between those is going to be your roll moment. So you're going to have, as you're going around a corner, you can imagine the forces are acting on that center of gravity, uh, and then you've got a distance between that center of gravity and the roll center. And so that's going to be your roll moment, uh, and the larger that distance, uh, with the same force, you're going to have force multiplied by distance to give you your moment, so you're going to have more roll. So if you can decrease the distance between the roll center and the center of gravity, then you can decrease the amount of roll, and therefore you can decrease the amount of geometry change in the suspension, and you'll have better handling is the idea. So, well, how can you do this? Well, a very simple way uh, just to kind of illustrate how this is done is just by changing the geometry of the suspension arms. So here you can see this bottom arm has kind of been tilted up versus what we have here. And so that raises the instantaneous center of these two arms. And so then you're going to have your roll center much closer to the center of gravity. So with a much shorter distance, you'll have less roll. Now it's not exactly that simple to do because there's other things you have to take into consideration, but that's the whole idea behind it. So it's important to know that uh, this isn't just a single point, that's actually a line going across the entire vehicle. So if you have your roll center in the rear, your roll center in the front, um, and then basically you're going to have an approximation of your center of gravity. It'll actually change along the distance of the car, uh, but you can kind of illustrate it with just a simple line. And so that's going to be uh, your roll moment, you know, across that distance right there, and then you've got your roll axis axis uh, connecting the two points to the front and the rear of where your roll center is located. So it's important to know that it is, you know, a three-dimensional thing. It's not uh, necessarily just a single point. It is a line about which the car is going to be rotating. And this line doesn't stay still. It doesn't stay in this single spot. So you can see here um, where I've drawn a vehicle and, you know, you've got this step up for one side of the vehicle and it's kind of lowered on the other side of the vehicle. And so not only can the roll center move up and down depending on how the wheels move, uh, but if one moves up and one moves down, you know, it can also move side to side. So that roll center is going to be moving around quite a bit. Um, depending on the geometry of the suspension design. So what are your design goals when you're creating a vehicle, uh, you know, taking into consideration the roll center? Well, you want to minimize body roll. So in order to do that, you want to keep your center of gravity and your roll center as close to possible. You also want to minimize the camber and geometry changes with suspension movement. So, you know, something like this where you turn that uh, lower control arm up a bit, it may increase uh, the amount of, uh, or resist the amount of roll that you get, but on the other hand, it may increase the amount of camber change that you get, uh, so it may end up having a negative influence overall, uh, depending on, you know, what driving conditions you're in. 
You also want to minimize the roll center movement uh, for more predictable driving feel. So if you're driving all kinds of all different surfaces and where the body is starting to roll is changing all over the place, uh, it's going to make it more challenging for the driver to perceive how the car is behaving. So you kind of want to keep it so that it doesn't move too much. Uh, and then finally, you want to balance the front to rear roll center heights for your desired slip angle characteristics. So if you have your center of gravity really high on one end and center of gravity really low on one end, you know, you may have a larger slip angle on one end because you've got more roll and it's changing the geometry of the vehicle. And you know, it can also slightly influence some of the uh, loading transferring. So based on how that happens, you know, you're gonna have a greater chance for understeer or oversteer. So you're gonna wanna use that in consideration as well. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.